Good evening and welcome to our service of Vespers for Maundy Thursday. While many of us long to be in person in our places of worship today, to enter into the deep customs and traditions of the church around foot washing and celebrating the Holy Communion, tonight our worship takes a more simple form. And we are reminded through word and prayer of a God whose love is faithful. Indeed, Jesus says, no greater love has this, but to lay down one's life for one's friends. Today, as we gather for worship, I also invite you to respond to God's love with your generosity. Look out for a neighbor who's more vulnerable. Care after someone who is on the front lines of this pandemic. Reach out to those most isolated and give generously of your time, your talent, and your treasure. That is our response to God's love. Indeed, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation. That 
the brightness of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun. And may the poor be lifted up. The hymn of light is Joyous Light of Heavenly Glory, number 561 in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set light in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our night by the brightness of Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation, and with all your creatures we give you glory, through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The psalm is portions of Psalm 116. We read responsively. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are faithful in every generation. Help us to call on you and to trust that you will respond. Empower us to fulfill our vows to you in the presence of your people, that your name be glorified and your kingdom served. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Now before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then Jesus poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, you are going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also then my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason said, Not all of you are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I give you a new commandment, that you should love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once on an outing with friends, I was sitting with a college fraternity brother, minding his new baby. Mom was boating with some friends, and we were getting the grill ready and catching up with each other. It became apparent in the course of our conversation that my friend's daughter needed to have her diaper changed. In fact, the longer time wore on, it was becoming increasingly more difficult to pretend that we didn't notice the obvious. Finally, I reached for the baby bag, I laid her down, and I looked for, for help from Daddy. But he shook his head at the messy scene, and rightly embarrassed, he said, Don't look at me. I never um, touch the stuff. I never touch the stuff. Young, unmarried, no children, naive myself, I understood his hesitancy. That particular stuff is messy, smelly, and just plain embarrassing. No one wants to touch it except perhaps for the little darling who made it. But now, four kids later and a bit wiser, I realize that this is only some of the stuff that must be touched. Runny noses must be wiped, spit up food is mopped up, tears are dried, and as they get older, there are boo-boos and wounds that have to be cleaned and bandaged. There's hair that needs to be slicked down or spiked up. Stuff must be touched in life and in death too. For generations, cleaning and dressing a body, preparing it for burial was part of the grieving process. Often we turn that over to the professional services of a compassionate funeral director, but the stuff must still be touched by someone. Touching the stuff, it's the very substance of life and death. It's also the gospel. Indeed, Jesus touched the stuff. On that last night with his disciples, his closest friends, as they gathered at table to share a meal, they apparently ate with dirty, dusty feet. 
Whether there was no one there to do it for them or not, I do not know. We aren't told why, but we can guess that no one wanted to touch the stuff. It was dirty, messy, and frankly degrading. But finally, finally Jesus got up, put a towel on, and began to touch, to handle, to lovingly wash the dirt and dust of their journey off their feet. It was embarrassing, as Peter's protests reveal, but it was the stuff and substance of Jesus' life and ministry. No one, no one is more important in the kingdom of God than the one who needs love and care. And no one, no one in the kingdom is too important to humble themselves to care after the needs of another. These last weeks in isolation have reminded me of that too. Again and again, I've been reminded as we've had to rediscover our call to be the body of Christ, the church, in challenging times. Even our best efforts in worship, learning, fellowship, and service have been turned on their ears, and we've had to adapt and discern how God is calling us forward together. Relationships with those that we love, they've had to be negotiated. Feeding ministries have had to be rethought. Worship has taken on fresh creativity while tending our heritage and our tradition. Steep learning curves around technology have had to be overcome. What was once familiar, perhaps even easy, has had to be rethought, relearned, and dare I say it, renewed. And all of this, all of this is wrapped up in the big, stinky, dirty diaper of our new reality. Where so many are on the front lines, putting their lives at risk so that we can be safe and live. Some of these are easily identifiable. Police, firefighters, EMTs, docs, nurses, technicians, bonafide heroes, every one of them. And still others we so take for granted, whose heroism is hidden in minimum wage plain sight. These last days, I've thought a lot about my own daughter, a hairstylist in better days, but a home cleaner by day who is still being dispatched to clean up other people's stuff. I think of Juan who manages the group home in the next block. Letitia, who does the laundry at my local nursing home. Dan, who works in his parents' pizzeria. Pat, our letter carrier. Casey, who was laid off from his job at the mall and is now doing deliveries for UPS. Diane, my neighbor, who works in a grocery store. Larry and Marvin, the garbage men who tend my block. And I find myself raising prayers for these some of whom have health insurance, others who have none, and I seek ways to be neighbor with them and to them. In ways, God forgive me, I wasn't as thoughtful about until these last weeks when they have become indispensable, deputized as essential personnel to touch my stuff and yours. In these And in so many others, I recognize Jesus anew. Jesus who transcends any notion of our stuff being unworthy of God's touch. The Savior that broke boundaries like the idea that the flesh, the world, the stuff of reality was a hindrance to the blessing of God. Jesus who reveals that God is not like a hesitant father at an outing unable to get down and touch the stuff of God's own creation. That somehow God would only be concerned about what is inside our souls, spirits, and hearts. No. The gospel of Jesus Christ is that God Our God gets down, rolls up the sleeves, cares for the stuff of life, good, bad, and ugly, challenging us to come in close, 
to listen to the need, to recognize that we have gifts, and to put them to use out of love for God and neighbor. As we touch others, physically close to us, and as we discover how to touch others at an appropriate social distance, we are nothing less than the body of Christ, holding the frightened, discovering ways to come close to the lonely, sacrificing something of ourselves to love as we have been and continue to be loved by God. We respect and honor those who put themselves in harm's way by making them as safe as we can, offering our gratitude and support in ways that encourage and bless. But Maundy Thursday reminds us that even as Jesus knelt down and tied the towel to his waist, so also we are called to humble service. For, beloved, this is the stuff of life. And we touch it, for it too has been redeemed. Amen. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. Our hymn is Yezu, Yezu, Fill Us With Your Love, number 708 in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this holy house, for all who offer here worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us. For those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, for those who are in captivity, 
for those lonely and in isolation, for those overwhelmed by pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have Lord have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Elizabeth, our bishop, for all bishops, pastors, and deacons, for all servants of the church, for all the baptized, for all those who gather from across our synod and church in this time of worship, for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the concerns that are now lifted up across this church and world and shared aloud, in silence, or on social media using the hashtag DEMD Praise, P R A Y S. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. giving thanks for Mary, the mother of Jesus, and all who have gone before us and are now at rest. Rejoicing in the communion of the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord. To you, you, O Lord. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts, and give us the will to serve others as he was servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us this day. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to ask, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Throned on the grave. 